Welcome back to the channel and this is your friend Dr. Suresh Envy here and uh, I'm here again with the next part of fundamentals of cavity preparation. Uh, when I made the uh, initial uh, steps of cavity preparation, I had thought that probably I won't do uh, the final cavity preparation steps, but there were few of the viewers which who requested that I should be doing the next part of the uh, cavity preparation. And I'm here again with the same important topic so that all of us understand this topic in a better way. If you are new here, uh, I am Dr. Suresh Shenvi. I have cleared various exams. I'm a faculty endodontist. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing. And today, uh, as you know, the second part of the fundamentals of tooth preparation, it starts with final stage of tooth preparation. And uh, before reaching into the final stage of uh, cavity preparation, you should make sure that all the initial guidelines which we have discussed in the earlier part of the uh, fundamentals of tooth preparation are followed. For example, the depth should be minimum that is 0.2 millimeter into the dentinormal junction if you are doing it for the uh, dental amalgam. When I ask my students uh, the you know to do the cavity preparation and I tell them okay you can go ahead with the restoration. Many times the student do ask me sir I see that there are still dark spots on the enamel should I remove them. Now this question is really valid and uh, if you have read the guidelines by World Health Organization and uh, many textbooks it keeps on changing but out of all the information what is provided you should look for three important factors to decide whether you have to remove that dental decay whether it is in enamel or whether it is in dentine. Most of the time when you see a tooth for the first time you look for discoloration you look for the catch and then you also look for softness at the base. Out of all this, out of all this, the most important aspect which tells you that you have to remove the decay is the softness at the base. If you probe and if you see that their lesion is still soft, you have to remove it if it is in enamel. And how to remove it into the dentine? That's what we are going to cover in today's uh, uh, this lecture and it starts as a step 5 because we have covered the four steps in the initial part of the tooth preparation series and today the fifth step and the sixth step and it involves the removal of defective restorative material and the soft dentine. So before going about in depth about the dental decay let us first see when should you remove the old restoration. Personally uh, the Old amalgam restorations I believe should be removed completely because they don't bond with the new uh, layer new layer of the freshly mixed amalgam. But the textbook does say that you can create the cavity along with the old restoration if it fulfills following criteria. Of course it is much easier to uh, restore the or repair the composite rather than the amalgam. So what are the guidelines? If old material may affect the aesthetics of new restoration, it is advised that you have to remove the old restoration. If there is a decay and uh, below the old restoration and you are planning to do a new restoration, of course, it is very important that you have to remove the decay. So uh, it is clear that you have to remove the old restoration and the decay before doing a new restoration. Pulp was symptomatic preoperatively. Now this is very important because if the pulp is symptomatic then it indicates there may be some leakage, there may be some decay below the old restoration. So in order to uh, confirm whether there is any lesion beneath the uh, old restoration, you really have to remove the old restoration at this stage. And once you remove the old restoration, if you feel that uh, the decay is still seen, then of course you may have to explore it rest of the area. If old material affects the retention of new material, of course you have to still replace the old restoration completely. So we will not discuss that in depth. We have to know more about the decay which is present in the dentine. Now when you discuss about the uh, presence of a decay into the dentine and whether you should remove at this step that is the fifth step of fundamentals of tooth preparation you should know that there are two types of 
decay in the dentin and this is really important in most of the exams whether it is npd which i have personally given whether it is dubai exam which which i appeared or various indian entrance exams even today they tend to ask you this uh, point very often and this is quite favorite for the examiners when you are under uh, when you are doing the uh, undergraduate uh, exam now first type is the firm dentin earlier it was called as affected dentin and this is given in the latest edition of the books if you read the old edition probably fourth or fifth or sixth of study one you won't find the firm dentin uh, uh, the terminology so earlier it was called as affected dentin affected dentin is basically uh, a dent part of the dentin which has lost its minerals that is the inorganic part but the collagen structure which is organic structure of the dentin it is still intact and it will remineralize and it doesn't have any organism in it whereas the soft dentin which is also called as infected dentin it has lost the mineral plus it also uh, has collagen uh, damaged collagen and this damage is because of an enzyme called as matrix metalloproteinase and it won't remineralize and it also has abundant load of organism so if you see a dental decay the top portion is generally the uh, infected dentin that is a soft dentin and the deeper portion generally involves uh, the presence of a affected dentin or firm dentin and the difference between affected dent dentin and infected dentin is very commonly asked in your theory exams also as mentioned earlier soft dentin is soft in consistency it is easy to remove because it is totally denatured it may be light in color because it doesn't have time for remineralization and it can be stained with a dye whereas firm dentin uh, feels to be little bit hard and it can be stained with many dyes and it is firm in consistency so if you are treating a tooth you are advised to remove the soft dentin and you can leave firm dentin because it has an ability to remineralize many uh, companies give different dye solutions for example this is one which can be used to differentiate between the soft dentin and the firm dentin to guide you clinically there is a uh, one very important question in many entrance exams or your teacher will ask you that which portion of the decay is stained with this caries detecting solutions please remember it is the denatured collagen which will absorb this stain and it gives an idea that this is probably the infected dentin or soft dentin so if you have the stained uh, dentin it indicates that you still have to excavate slightly more in order to reach the affected dentin that is a firm dentin please remember that although you may have uh, the dye or you may have various steps ultimately you have to rely more on the consistency rather than the change in the color for example if you see a decay which is not a uh, dark we generally tend to we tend to feel that a dark decay is always remineralized which is true but many times that even the soft but firm decay uh, i'm really sorry the light colored firm dentin is still uh, good in consistency so that you can retain it into the cavity preparation so do not always rely on the color you have to really probe with the probably a blunt or slightly sharp probe and because you don't want to put a lot of pressure and if because if the dentin is thick you may perforate the pulp chamber so but if the the dentin appears to be firm you can still uh, retain it in order to save as much as the two structure possible now if you have a decay at one portion of the floor and if you have some amount of natural dentin a good dentin which is present beside this decay at this step that is the step 5 of the tooth uh, preparation you have to only deepen that portion now there are two advantages of it that you are retaining the natural tooth that is a natural dentin the second is if you have the normal dentin beside this uh, base what you have given that will be better uh, in a position to absorb 
the force which is put on the in, uh, the restoration and that will be transferred to the dentin because you may have a lot of material which is available but they cannot match the properties of the dentin so wherever you can restrict the depth into the final steps of cavity preparation you should retain the normal dentin if possible is there any situation where i don't remove the decay completely that means you can still leave some amount of decay and that situation would be indirect pulp capping so indirect pulp capping i have made a video on direct and in pulp uh, indirect pulp capping please do check the description for the link another important uh, treatment strategy which is called as caries controlled restoration in this situation also we might consider leaving some amount of the decay because what happens suppose you have around five teeth which has very uh, acute caries and if you only concentrate on one decay at given point of time and you tend to treat it the other tooth decay might progress very fast so in such situation you would excavate a certain amount of decay in multiple teeth without thinking too much of you know whether you have completely removed it the bacterial load has to be removed in this situation and you restore with glass isomer cement so that the progress of the decay is reduced and that gives you good amount of time you know to concentrate on one single teeth and then protecting the other teeth by preventing a rapid progress of the decay this is a very important point from the textbook that presence of organism in dentin cannot be judged clinically that's why you should rely on the consistency as i mentioned earlier and this is a latest concept you might have seen immediate dentin sealing and many practitioners won't won't remove complete decay they would slightly leave you know which appears to be slight you know a firm or slightly soft decay and they seal it with a dentin uh, sealing agent believing that if the amount of microorganism load is reduced and if you have sealed the lesion now the remineralization process will start of course there are many studies which are given into the uh, articles but this is still a little bit controversial but this is follow best method to remove the decay in dentin this is a very favorite question Uh, especially for the post graduates and undergraduates and uh, they tend to ask you whether you want to use a spoon excavator whether you want to use the high speed burr because if you use a spoon excavator in all situations maybe you may not be able to remove the decay if you use a high speed aerator if you to remove the decay and if the dentin is very thin you may end up harming the pulp or even doing the pulpal exposure so to decide you really have to see the consistency of the decay which you are treating if you have a large soft decay it is much easier you can just peel off that soft decay with this spoon excavator but if you are treating a deeper the portion of the dentin then the textbook clearly says that you have to follow this three guidelines and this is bit confusing please remember the first thing is you have to use carbide burr now why carbide burr that is also a very common question in mbd exam and entrance exams carbide burr reduces or generates less amount of heat when you are cutting the tooth so that is most important and that can help the health of the pulp because heat can transmit to pulp if you are treating a deep dentin decay and that can affect the pulp and may cause necrosis also so shift to carbide burr the round in consistency and you should be using a high speed hand piece you should be using a high speed hand piece but that doesn't mean that you run this burr at uh, high speed what the textbook says is that you should use a round carbide burr in a high speed hand piece but at a low speed and how do you do that of course you can press Uh, the foot pedal less and there is something called as stall out i'm not sure whether you are aware of it a stall out basically means that it is just a sufficient amount of pressure above uh, above if if the force increases uh, beyond this on the burr the aerator is going to stop so the textbook says that use a high speed hand piece at a low speed just above the stall out so i'm sure that this can uh, be answered very well Uh, once you go through these important points 
coming to the step 6 that is the pulp protection uh, i have made uh, pulp protection videos in uh, in detail that is it explains varnish cement base and you know it tells you the uh, principle behind application of these pulp protective agents materials used and uh, i hope that you check those videos and the link will be in the description but i will still try to cover important points in this uh, video also if you uh, check the literature or the textbooks for a healthy pulp if for a healthy pulp the distance between the restoration and the pulp should be minimum 2 mm this 2 mm is specifically for amalgam because or any metallic restoration because amalgam uh, is a non insulative material it can leach out the toxins it can leach out it can transfer the heat uh, so for amalgam or any metallic restoration you would really want 2 mm of insulating material now that insulating material can be denty or it can be dentin plus base or it can be liner base plus dentin so together it should be 2 mm you may have a situation where there is 2 mm of dentin above pulp in that situation you will not require any base or liner but if the dentin thickness is reduced then you may have add you know you may need to add up base you may need to add up liner if the thickness of uh, dentin that is the remaining dentinal thickness is less than 0.5 mm so please remember this point and if you go through my other videos all the things will be really clear students are asked which is the best base or the material which is best to make the base according to recent editions the best material for cement base is ready in modified glass and over cement because it allows you to finish early because it sets very fast and it has good chemical adhesion releases fluoride which is the best liner we all know that calcium hydroxide is most commonly used especially in in diet pulp capping if you talk about the diet pulp capping where pulp is exposed you would like to use the calcium hydroxide and the mta but mta is found to be superior than the calcium hydroxide when you are doing a diet pulp capping i have also made a very nice video on the pulp capping that is direct and indirect and the links will be provided in the description calcium hydroxide liner should be always covered by resin modified glass enamel cement now why is that because calcium hydroxide liner is found to get displaced when you are directly putting a restoration for example most of the textbooks say that below composite restoration you don't require a base if you are using a liner then you are putting a composite then that liner may get displ displaced if it is calcium hydroxide liner another advantage would be the research has found that the calcium hydro hydroxide liner gets dissolved over a period of time so if you have a resin modified glass enamel cement over the calcium hydroxide liner that area would be still protected with the amount of force which is put or the leakage will be reduced what about varnish uh, i still believed in varnish because in the current scenario of many dental colleges students are still taught about varnish but the latest books do say that varnish is no longer recommended of course it is you know it may be it may differ from one textbook to another textbook but the sado one says that varnish are no longer recommended and you can use dentin sealants which prove to be better when you are doing the restorations if you like the channel also subscribe and click the bell icon so that you get the future notifications i hope that current series of fundamentals of tooth preparation is helping you to understand this topic in a better way uh, i will soon come with the next topic that is secondary retention and resistance form which is very confusing to the students because in textbook everything all the retention features are given in one single section so we will be dividing it based on where which type of restorations would require which type of secondary retention features